This is Bernard, a member of the genus Taliqua, the blue tongue skinks. Now he isn't very happy. The cameraman is trying to move Bernard off the road so he doesn't go from a blue tongue to a red smear. But it's activated his defenses. Blue tongue defenses are three pronged. First, they hiss as a warning. Secondly, they assume a larger defensive posture by mimicking the most terrifying thing known to man, a pancake. Finally, they reveal their tongue. Blue is an uncommon color in nature and makes for an impressive display. Now you might think, so what? It's not that scary. Well, it's very good at reflecting UV light, particularly the back of the tongue. To a predatory kookaburra who has excellent UV vision, this tongue becomes a blinding neon and throws the snag stealer off course. Luckily for Bernard, it's not a kookaburra today, but a kind Samaritan. Despite being called blue tongue lizards, they are more specifically skinks, and big ones at that. They're not the biggest skinks in the world though, not to skink shame. That title goes to the Solomon Island skink. And they're also not the biggest in Australia. That would be this fella, the, I kid you not, land mullet. <laughs> I love this country. There are eight total species of blue tongue, with six being from Australia and two from Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. Among the homegrown blueies, there's the Adelaide Pygmy, the Centralian, the Blotched, the Western, the Shingleback, which looks like the love child of a gecko and a pinecone, and lastly, the common blue tongue. The common bluey has two subspecies, the Northern and the one you're probably most familiar with, the Eastern blue tongue. Blue tongues can measure up to 60 centimeters and some absolute units weigh over a kilo. You may have noticed the legs, what's left of them anyway. There are legless lizards in Australia, not to be confused with snakes, but blue tongues are what I like to call nearly legless lizards. When moving, they primarily use their serpentine body to slither along, but the legs are still useful for climbing over obstacles. Because of this movement and their scaly appearance, they're often mistaken for snakes. It's theorized that the markings of the eastern blue tongue are meant to mimic the death adder. Blueys have the ability to drop their tails. This amputee appetizer is used as a last resort when under attack. The tail does grow back eventually, but it's never quite the same. Shinglebacks can't drop theirs, but interestingly they store a lot of fat in those tails. This is to fool predators into thinking it's their head, which brings a whole new meaning to getting your head out of your ass. Blueys feed on a combination of invertebrates, plant matter, and occasionally smaller reptiles. Because they have all the agility of a flaccid jellyfish, they tend to go after slow-moving prey. These sagacious skinks make their homes in burrows or under logs. The narrower the better. It keeps them calm, like a weighted blanket if it was made of dirt. The Adelaide Pygmy Blue Tongue has a habit of making burrowing spiders homeless to make room for themselves. This species was so good at burrowing that it was considered extinct for 50 years, when in fact it was just hiding. They're back now, but also very much endangered. When it comes to breeding, blue tongues make 50 shades of grey look like an episode of Play School. Females often come away with bite marks and lacerations after a reptilian roll in the hay, and sometimes they straight up die. If she's not receptive to a male's advances, she may bite him or poo in his general direction. Competing males also indulge in a bit of the old ultra-violence, as they determine who will get to mate. Many of them will kill each other in the process. Who knew something so adorable could be so vicious? Hmm, point taken. After a three to five month pregnancy, a mother bluey will give birth to live young, rather than the reptile trademark of laying undercooked omelettes. This adaptation allows them to live in colder places than other reptiles, like Tasmania. Eastern blueys give birth to up to 10 babies at a time, while shinglebacks typically only have twins. All of the species are quite solitary and only meet up once a year to breed. Shinglebacks are monogamous and reunite with the same partner each time. The cuties? Juvenile blue tongues are vulnerable little fellas and are threatened by a whole host of different predators. These include birds like brown falcons and kookaburras, snakes like the eastern brown and the mulga, and also domestic animals like dogs and cats. After reaching maturity, adults can shrug off most kinds of animal attacks thanks to the bones in their scales, but they're no match for the car, the spade, or the lawnmower. Unfortunately, many landscape projects turn into bloody bluey bifurcation. On top of that, humans have decided to bypass the Geneva Convention and use chemical weapons on the poor buggers. Sometimes gardeners put out snail bait to keep the mischievous mollusks at bay. 
But ultimately it ends up in the stomachs of our lovely lizard friends, who have a penchant for escargot. As a result, they die horribly. It's a horticulture holocaust. Inadvertently, perhaps. But that's what they all say. It's off to The Hague with you, Mildred. The great irony is that blueies are the best natural pest control you could ask for. They literally do it for free. Even a single blue tongue will keep the snails and roaches at bay. If you'd like to help them out, you can always leave rocks and logs around your yard for them to make a home in. If they hadn't suffered enough already, blueies are also the victim of the illegal pet trade. They're often captured from the wild by poachers, quite easily given their top speed, and sold to overseas buyers. This little blotchy was stuffed in a sock and taped inside a DVD player, bound for Hong Kong. I'm not even making a joke about that. That's just ah. f***ed up. These poachers should be force-fed snail pellets. You may call that cruel and unusual, but I prefer creative justice. After all, I don't have a degree in law, but rather graphic design. If our remarkable reptiles can avoid these horrible fates, they might live to the ripe old age of 30. These sentient sausages have shimmied their way from the bush to the backyard and into our hearts. Blue tongues are calm, considerate, and cute. Except for the breeding bit, but we really ought to take better care of them. They are, after all, true blue.